All right, so we're going to start electrochemistry 2, redox 2. We're going to start looking at galvanic or voltaic cells. Cell potent we're not going to look at cell potential or spontaneous reactions, just really the, gal uh, the galvanic voltaic cells. So there is part of your books that we're not going to get to. So again, loss of electrons is oxidation, Leo. Gain of electrons, reduction, GER. Leo goes GER. The transfer of electrons that occurs is exothermic and can be used to produce electricity. So exothermic is spontaneous, happens like that, like on its own. You don't have to pressure anything into doing it. At other times, the reactions you want to occur may be non-spontaneous and require the addition of electricity to drive the reaction. We'll get to that in the next section. Electrochemistry is the branch of chemistry that deals with the relationship between electricity and chemical reactions. So voltaic cells. The energy is released in a spontaneous redox reaction. It can be used to perform electrical work. This is accomplished in a voltaic cell. It's a device in which a transfer of electrons takes place through external pathways rather than directly between reactants. So what you're going to have is the copper is going to plate the zinc, or you would hope that it would. So spontaneous reactions will occur in a single cell, but splitting the cell into two halves allow for the external pathway of electrons to be created. Now, if you think about it, we had the copper with zinc plating it. So it, it would cause, you'd have to do more to make this happen. That more that I'm talking about is creating a link between the two sh sheets, the copper sheet in a copper solution and a zinc sheet in a zinc solution. <laughs> A voltaic cell is a device in which a chemical energy is converted to electrical energy. Okay? What are parts of a, 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 a voltaic cell? So right here we have a zinc strip, we have a copper strip, strip, and we have sulfate right there. There are two metal solids connected by an external circuit right up here called electrodes. The electrode at which the oxidation occurs is the anode. So Leo loses electrons, oxidation, ox, anox. So you're going to think of anox, Leo, anox. And then the electrode from which the reduction occurs is called the cathode, red cat, gur, red cat, gur, red cat. Leo, anox, red cat, gur. The anode will be the metal that is more active, which will also be more oxidized. Well, Miss Co, how do you know that it's more active? Well, this is where you're going to look in your reference table to table J. Table J will tell you that zinc is more active than copper. So in this case, my anode will be my zinc, and my cathode would be my copper. Okay, so electrons will flow from the anode, loss of electrons, to the anode, gain of electrons. So oxidation loses, reduction gains. The collection of lost electrons at the anode causes it to be negative, and the cathode is positive. The T, positive, cathode, anode, negative. Think of like onion. Okay, so it flows across here. All right, well, there's, here's what I was telling you about. Anox red cat, anode metal, undergoes oxidation to form more positive ions in solution. So you get more positives in here. 
The positive metallic ions in the beaker that contain the cathode undergoes reduction to form more of the metal electrode. So you get more of this, less of this. So it reduces here, you get less of this, you get more of this. The reducing agent, oxidizing agent. All right, so this one loses the electrons. This one gains the electrons. This one gets bigger. All right, so if I have my half reactions, and what I was talking about earlier in the last slide section, your half reactions are going to be so much easier than any of the second, third, fourth ones that we were looking at because you literally have the metal strips and you got to know what it goes to. So zinc will go to zinc 2 plus with two electrons. Copper 2 plus, two electrons to copper. Balance it out. Zinc, copper 2, zinc 2, copper. Okay, so what is this thing right here? This thing right here is called a salt bridge. What is the purpose? As the oxidation half cell gets larger, the concentration of positive ions and negative ions flow through the salt bridge to balance out the charges in the beaker. So if one side gets more positive, negatives are gonna go in there across that salt bridge. So across this bridge. If an, one side gets more negative, Positive electrons are going to flow through to that side of the beaker. As a reduction a half cell gets smaller, concentration of the positive ions, positive ions flow through the salt bridge to replace them. So it's just equilibrium happening. All right, anions in solution and the salt bridge move towards the anode to neutralize the positive charge of the cations produced when the zinc metal is oxidized. Negative ions within the cell flow in a direction opposite the electrons outside the cell. Cations will move towards the, cat, the cathode. Anions go towards the anode. This, the cell is kept neutral and the current flows uh, continues to flow. So you want the neutral, you want equilibrium. All right, we're going to label. So first off, Looking at this, you've got silver, you've got lead. On the activity series, this is second from the bottom. This one's like fourth or fifth from the bottom. This one is more active than, the, than this one. So this is my anode. This is my anode, this is my cathode. Okay. So let's um, write out the half reactions and balance. So anode. And ox, this oxidizes, there's my oxidizing agent. So it goes from Pb to Pb plus two, plus two electrons. This one, red cat, reduces. Um, it goes from Ag plus to Ag. If there's two here and one there, I just got to multiply everything on that side by two to balance, which gives me two Ag plus 2e, 2ag, get rid of my electrons because they're spectating, take what's on this side, add them together, take what's on this side, sorry, right there, add them together. Okay. Now let's do the, the direction of the electron flow. It goes from the anode to the cathode. And then this goes up through here, okay? Makes a nice little circuit, goes in a circle. Okay, which one increases and which one dissolves? So this one dissolves because I'm going from this solid to an ion. So it's reduce, uh, oxidizing, it's getting smaller. My cathode increases, it's gaining electrons. It's losing electrons, gaining. Losing dissolves, gaining bigger. All right, so looking at this real quick, a porous barrier could also be used as opposed to a salt bridge. Okay, so um, looking at this, you got the porous bridge allows um, the sulfate to pass through, but it blocks the zinc and the copper. All right, that's it. If you have any questions, 
please don't hesitate to ask, and I hope you guys have a great day.